And now, on Open Ears, Julius Eastman. Julius Eastman was an American composer, pianist, vocalist, and performance artist. Known for minimalist music and creative performances, Eastman found acceptance elusive in his own lifetime. Today, his revolutionary music is experiencing a renaissance. Julius Eastman Jr. was born in Manhattan on October 27, 1940. When he was five, Eastman's family relocated to Ithaca in upstate New York. His parents divorced, and his mom raised Julius and his brother. Eastman showed a talent for music early on, and he was accepted to the Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia. Eastman enrolled there in 1959 to study piano and later composition. A classmate of Eastman's observed that being at Curtis seemed hard for Eastman. He didn't seem at ease with his fellow students. Some of those students seemed to steer clear of Eastman, perhaps because he was gay. After graduating from Curtis, Eastman returned to Ithaca. He kept studying music at Ithaca College and gave music therapy classes at a nearby state hospital. In July of 1966, Eastman gave a performance of his song trilogy for piano, soprano, cellist, and dancer, with Eastman himself taking the stage to dance. 1968 was a breakthrough year for Eastman. He danced in a production of Stravinsky's L'Histoire du Soldat at Cornell. He was hired as a teaching assistant at the State University College in Buffalo, New York, and his compositions got the attention of Lucas Foss. Foss was the conductor of the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra and founded the Center for Creative and Performing Arts at the University at Buffalo. Foss's center would become the heart of a new wave in modern classical music, and in 1969, Eastman became a fellow there. A year later, Eastman was appointed instructor at the University of Buffalo, kicking off some of his most creatively prolific years. Eastman was composing, performing, and collaborating with other leading-edge classical figures, like Pauline Oliveros. He worked with luminary conductors like Zubin Mehta and Pierre Boulez. The recording of his performance in Eight Songs for a Mad King by Sir Peter Maxwell Davies was nominated for a Grammy. But Eastman's friends and family began noticing what they considered erratic behaviors and mood shifts. During this time, Eastman composed Masculine and Feminine, the score for Masculine has not survived, but Feminine has been reconstructed through a performance recording from 1974. Influenced by the Stonewall Riots and the Attica Prison Uprising, Eastman wrote confrontational music about the status of black and gay people in America. Inspired by the work of comedians like Richard Pryor, he used provocative titles like Gay Gorilla to make his audience purposefully uncomfortable. Eastman's biographer, Rene Levine Packer, says Eastman wanted to use very toxic words to be emphatic about what was going on and how he felt about it. He wanted us to confront these terribly difficult terms. In 1976, Eastman moved to New York City. He became the conductor and co-curator of the Brooklyn Philharmonia Community Outreach Series, where he helped organize and program concerts all over New York City. But making his mark on New York City's classical music scene was proving harder than Eastman expected after his success in Buffalo. Eastman was often isolated, but in 1981, he became the first male vocalist in groundbreaking modernist Meredith Monk's ensemble and can be heard on her album Dolman Music. Eastman's behavior became more concerning and his physical deterioration was visible. Depression, isolation, drugs, and alcohol had all taken a toll. And as Eastman drifted in and out of homeless shelters, many of his musical scores and recordings were lost. In the late 80s, for a short period of time, he worked at Tower Records in the classical music department. There was an outpouring of affection from people who came to see him. But one day, he left work and didn't return. In May 1989, struggling with his health and finances, Eastman returned to Buffalo. A year later, on May 28, 1990, Julius Eastman died of cardiac arrest at Millard Fillmore Hospital in Buffalo, New York. His mother and brother were notified a few days later. However, the public didn't learn of Eastman's death until nine months later, when his obituary was published in The Village Voice. Recently, scholars and musicians are reviving Eastman's musical legacy. A trove of recordings was found in Buffalo and became the foundation for a three-CD set called Unjust Malaise that came out in 2005. The California-based ensemble Wild Up released a recording of Feminine in 2021, and major orchestras around the world are programming his work. 
During his lifetime, Eastman had difficulty finding his place and being accepted in the classical music world. But his works illuminate his passion, creativity, and talent. In his own words, what I am trying to achieve is to be what I am to the fullest. Black to the fullest, a musician to the fullest, a homosexual to the fullest. It is through art that I can search for the self.